Good morning. I grantly have the pleasure of sharing this morning's devotions with you. Thursday, the 29th of September, I shared on how to know God's will for your life. This morning, I plan to continue with knowing God's will. I shared about God's sovereign, moral, and personal will, and the closer our lives are orientated towards God's sovereign and moral will, the more easily we'll find God's personal will for our lives. Another word for knowing God's will for our lives is guidance. I like to think of it this way. The G stands for, uh, stands for God. The letter U stands for you as a person. The next letter I stands for the personal pronoun me. So, guidance is God, you and I dance. Guidance is the art of dancing with God. The incredible magical flowing of figures as they ballroom dance across the floor is mesmerizing. But what can the woman see? She can see the past, where she was 10 seconds ago, but for the next steps, she sees nothing. She has to rely totally on the man guiding her across the floor. Equally, in our dance with God, we can see where we have been, but for the dance to really flow with beauty, We need to rely on God that he knows where we are both going. The more we trust God in the dance, the more easily and gracefully we move forward, and the more we bring joy to God's heart. Hebrews 11 verse 5 and 6 says about Enoch, For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God, and without faith it is impossible to please God. Just like Enoch, who pleased God, As we trust God in the dance, we please God. Isn't this incredible that we can please God bringing a smile on God's face? If you want to put a smile on God's face, here are some principles that I have learned along the way. But before I start, I need to stress that these principles are only valid if you love God and want to walk in His way with all your heart, orientating your life in line with His sovereign and moral will. The first principle. Garbage in, garbage out. In the late 1990s, I was part of a team designing the new database for Operation Mobilization, the mission organization that I work for. After deployment, we had numerous complaints that the users could not get the reports they wanted. Example, they wanted all the churches in Pretoria, and they knew they'd entered in the Dutch Reformed Church in Linwood, but it was not showing in the report. However, as they had not entered in the church's postal code, the computer could not figure out where Linwood is, and so correctly omitted the result. Basically, the users were not putting in all the valid info, and so could not get the results out. This is a fundamental principle in computers. It does not matter how good the program, if you put garbage data in, you get garbage out. It seems like this is valid with us humans too. If you spend 10 minutes a day on God's Word, and five hours watching TV, when you need to make that critical decision, guess what is influencing that decision? You cannot expect a godly decision if you are not regularly spending quality time with God. The second principle, whose responsibility is it to hear God's voice? John 10 verse 4 says, Jesus' sheep follow him because they know his voice. Whose responsibility is it for the sheep to know the shepherd's voice? The sheep or the shepherd? Of course, it is the shepherd's responsibility to teach the sheep his voice. The sheep's responsibility is to obey that voice. If we are committed to obeying God's voice, God will speak, and every time. We are not allowed to doubt God's ability to rescue us, but we are allowed to doubt our hearing ability. If we are 98% sure, It was God who spoke. We can ask God to speak again until we are 100% sure it is God speaking. Once we are 100% sure it is God speaking, then we need to obey. The more wacky God's command seems to be, or bigger the danger, the more clearly God will speak. God is a loving father, not a malicious hide the truth in the dark that you need to try and squeeze his will out of him type. The more crazy the thing God is asking of you, the more clearly he will speak, the greater the danger. Because he loves you, the more clearly he will speak or rescue you. 
I will never forget in 1993, I was leading a team in Albania, handing out tracts. And when we got to the village square to do an open air meeting, we were met by a very hostile mob, each one yelling louder than the other. One man was trying to crash his car into our group, making U-turns and then coming straight at us, with us having to jump out the way. Then I noticed someone pick up a small stone, another bigger stone, and a third a half brick. We were in trouble. As I silently cried out to God for a miracle, wisdom, mercy, whatever, I heard him clearly plant the idea in my head to form a rugby huddle. How ridiculous is that? You cannot see the car or the stones, but in sheer obedience, I rallied our team into a rugby huddle and we started praying. As we were earnestly praying, we could feel the anger subside until you could hear a pin drop. I clearly heard God say, now. We broke the huddle and preached with everyone listening intently. When we were finished, the crowd begged us to come back again as they wanted to hear more about this God that loves them. I might share some more principles next time, but let me end off with a final principle for today. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, God's word is a lamp unto my feet and a light for my path. Growing up on a farm in the days when torch batteries were too expensive for every night's use, I often would take a little paraffin lamp to go switch off the pump down by the river. This lamp would make a a little circle of light, just enough for my next step. And as I take the next step, the light moves forward, enough for another step, and another, till I finally make my way to the pump and back again, never seeing more than probably a metre and a half in front of me. When John Kavanagh, a musical director from the United States, met Mother Teresa, he asked her to pray for him. What do you want me to pray for? She replied. He then uttered the request he had carried thousands of miles. Clarity. Pray that I may have clarity for my future. No, Mother Teresa answered. I will not do that. Clarity is the last thing you are clinging to and must let go of. When John said that she always seemed to have clarity, the very kind of clarity he was looking for, Mother Teresa laughed and said, I've never had clarity. What I've always had is trust. So I will pray that you trust God. I want to end off not praying for clarity for you, but that you may trust God where you can at best only see one step ahead of you. Father, I thank you that in my 37 years as a missionary, often feeling like a sheep bungling on in the dark, you have never left me but you have always stuck to my side. And each time I've cried out to you in desperation, you were there to guide me. I pray that you give each one listening the strength to trust you. Remind them that your ways are higher than their ways and your thoughts than their thoughts. I pray that in spite of their doubting, that they will remain true to what they know you have spoken to them. That in their blind faith, trusting that your way is best, they may bring a smile on your face and have a story to tell for years afterwards of the goodness of God. May your kingdom come and your name be glorified. Amen. Have a wonderful day. God bless.